Grab your cup of tea. Welcome to Home Keepers. I hope that you are having a good day. And I hope we have a whole lot of new viewers today. Perhaps we do. And if you're one of them, please feel welcome. And uh, don't let this be the last time that you join us. And I never, ever, ever, ever want to forget those wonderful people who've been with us for years and they're faithful. Uh, God bless you for your prayer and financial support. Uh, we're working together to try to make the American home uh, be as God outlined it in the scripture. And boy, when that happens, America will be changed for sure. So thankful for that. And uh, God is constantly sending us people that undergird that message that we want to get out. And today is no different. I have a brand new friend. Her name is Phyllis Gordon, a very, very experienced in children's ministries. And she wrote a book that uh, kind of took my breath away when I saw the title. And I thought, if I lived a million years, I would never think to do this. But she wrote a book prompted by the Lord, What's Next for the People on Earth? And this is actually a book for children on the book of Revelation. Uh, if God prompted me to do something like that, I would say that would be the last book I would choose. But this gal uh, followed the prompting of the Lord and also is very experienced in dealing with children. And so I think you need to pay attention to this, some of you church leaders and Sunday school leaders and all that, uh, that you could actually teach this book uh, to the children in your ministry and uh, give them a kind of a head start and heads up on learning scripture. Also, I'm going to join Stephanie, and we're making a strawberry pretzel jello salad. And one of our sidekicks here, Susan, she's our floor director, but she said that she's had this several times, and this is one great recipe. I think it will be because I'm excited about the salt kind of in the strawberry things. You know what I'm saying? Okay, also, uh, I was able to get just a few more of the breast cancer awareness necklaces, the one with the cross and the, the pink ribbon and all, and something that has really uh, gotten into the consciousness of the American people. So if you would like to have one for yourself or for a friend, there's a picture of it on the screen. Isn't that just gorgeous? Oh, I think that's one of the prettiest things we've ever offered. And uh, I have sent them to people who uh, had breast cancer, including my daughter and my niece, and uh, they have really appreciated them. So for that gift of $20, at least, I mean, if you want to send more, that's okay. Uh, call 1-800-229-0059. That's for your credit card, debit card, or write to me at Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, and we'll get it out to you. Don't you agree that's really pretty? Yes, it's very pretty. I love I it. I didn't wear one because it wouldn't look good on this, yeah. but... Um, it really, really is pretty. Mm -hmm. And uh, something nice to just let you know. It was interesting. Wanda was telling me this morning this lady bought three or four of them. And she said, um, but I don't know how they'll be received. And Wanda, she was in the will of the Lord, I'll tell you. She said, you know what you can do if you want to do this? And it's saying, this is just to let you know that you're in my prayers. Mm -hmm. And uh, who would not like that? Right, exactly. So, Everyone. Okay, I've been excited about this ever since I yeah, saw it. it. It smells really good. You have two cups of crushed pretzels, you have three quarter cup of melted butter, and you have three tablespoons of sugar, and you're going to mix that all together. And, and this gonna... gets rid of all your friends' frustrations. You yes. get the pretzels out and you start yes. hitting them. But And then you're going to press it into the bottom of that pan. Didn't want to be noisy. And I have 16 ounces of cream cheese here that I'm going to um, cream together. And I'm going to add one and a half cups of sugar. So, do you want to hear about what I made because I'm so frugal? <laughs> yeah, this is our coupon lady here. Okay, so I have all these necklaces, you know, mostly just costume jewelry, but I needed something to hang them on. And I thought about like going to the store and buying a hanger and then buying shower hangers and doing all this stuff that I see on Pinterest. And I said, well, let me see what I have around the house. <laughs> so I found a, a one by four in the shed. It was neatly cut that we had not used for something else. And I got some nails, little nails, and I staggered the nails on the board. And mm -hmm. then I had gold spray paint left over for something that I, <laughs> I used for something You've got else. to bring us a picture, girl. I'm going to. Okay. And then I spray painted it gold. 
and then I hung it up in my bedroom, and it looks so cute, and all my necklaces are hanging it from it It looks like now. a designer piece? Um, it like looks like a redneck designer piece. <laughs> Well, we've got to see it. Yes. So, what I so I'm saying all that to you know to say see what you have around your house before you go spending money because you'd be surprised at what you have around your house that you can use for multiple purposes. And you know that is so true. I remember the day when my mother darned socks. Yeah. We don't do that anymore. We just throw the socks away. Oh, I throw a lot of things. So uh, you and then, you know, also like we have a, a blower for the leaves and stuff outside. Mm -hmm. And typically if a part broke, or, you know, or if something happened, we would just get rid of it and buy a new one. Well, we had something happen. I YouTubed it, found out it was a $5 part. We, we, went, we went and got the $5 part and we fixed the blower. So this is 16 ounces of... Um, yeah, and thank goodness cool for it. the... Um, to go on the internet. Shall I start doing this? Uh, sure. You need to make sure that's two uh, things of strawberry jello, and that's extremely hot water. It was bubbling, so be careful. Okay. Okay. So this is um, 16 ounces of Cool Whip that I'm going to fold into this. You know, now I never fix hardly anything like this except for company, mm -hmm. or if I have the family or something, but usually I'm eating by myself. And... But when you do have company, you like those things you can fix way, way ahead of time. That is, and that's something tasty and different. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to always just that's serve a cake. That's what I'm excited about this. I said at the top of the show, the salt in it. Yeah. With the uh, with strawberries. The, okay. So you did that, and then it would be baked for eight minutes. Yeah. Okay. So we have a baked one over here, mm -hmm. thanks to Miss Susan. Right here. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to mix this up just real quick, and I'm going to put this in here. And the important part is going to make sure you get to all of the edges because you don't want the jello to seep down in. Okay, and okay. you want this really um, dissolved. This. Yes, make sure that's really dissolved, and I'm making sure this is really mixed. All right. Okay, so. Size is pretty. Yes. I would, I would think, you know, at Christmas time, do this and, oh, and then put yeah. put a little um, dollop of whipped cream on the top, and then a mint leaf, and you got your red and green. Or you could dye this green. <laughs> well, you could. I would. <laughs> okay. Do the strawberries go in here now? Yes, strawberries okay. go in there. Mm -hmm. And just, like I said, just make sure you get all the edges of this so that the jello doesn't seep down into the pretzels and you want as the jello to stay we've on mentioned many times living in florida it's never a problem to have good strawberries no. and cheapo wow this looks really full <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna overflow susan if it does Where's this? get ready cameraman and here's a finished one look how pretty Let me get rid of some of this stuff oh it's beautiful oh. Okay, I'm going to pour this and pray. Okay. And this is my first chance to taste it. So. Oh, you okay, know, I'm it's on it. a little ledge here. Let's go. I was just thanking oh God my. that I, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> Making a mess. <laughs> Can you imagine? Okay. okay. You have to get down... I'm feeling you have to get down deep to get those. You gotta get in there to get the pretzels out. Yes, here's your plate. I have made an absolute mess here, but that's okay. Oh, I'm glad it's you, not me. Because it's, you can, it can be cleaned up. It's all good. Mm -hmm. Let's spread this Move out. Move them around. Yeah, and then this goes in the refrigerator, and it'll set up like that. Mm -hmm. Isn't that pretty? All right, I, I just want. Oh dear. <laughs> And I'm chasing this all over I am the place. not picking this up, just so everyone knows. That's staying right there until Susan picks it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, is that my mm. fork? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Okay, dainty bite. That that crust is so crunchy. Mm. I wondered how you could use that on a mm. number of things, that crust. Are you okay? I'm in a little heaven here. <laughs> <laughs> that is delicious. I, it is absolutely yeah. delicious. But that 
That crust, that might uh, mm. have multiple uses, really. Just to sit and eat it. Uh -huh. I mean, you just <laughs> so, <laughs> if you want this recipe, uh, the information's coming up on your screen. Uh, don't forget to go to Stephanie's uh, face. What's it called? Face? Facebook. Ste Facebook.com yeah. backslash Stephanie's Fan Club. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, she's getting quite a following. It's very exciting. So All right, I want you to meet Phyllis Gordon coming up. An amazing young woman. You're going to like her. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. I said at the top of the show, it's uh, <coughs> so thrilling the people that the Lord sends to us, and especially dealing with children. Because the Bible's pretty plain. You train up a child in the way that he should go. Uh, when he's old, he's not going to depart from it. And the importance that you have your children in something that's teaching them the Word of God constantly. And a lot of the churches, I mean, it might be a church in your neighborhood that you do not attend, but if they have a VBS... Uh, check it out. That's a, I would call VBS that jump start for learning scripture because they're in there about five days in the summer and about three hours they're getting the word of God. That's, that's good. And this lady has devoted her life to this and I'm just uh, very pleased to welcome you to Homekeepers. Thank you. You are a homekeeper. I know yes, you Yes, ma'am. Uh, what's your position? What was your position with the Southern Baptist Minister to Children? And was that on a statewide level or? That was, I worked for a church in Huntersville full-time mm -hmm. uh, as a full-time children's minister. I've been a children's minister part-time prior to that because at that time when I was part-time, my own children were small and I definitely wanted to make sure I had plenty of time to spend time with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are a graduate of the University of North Carolina. Yes, ma'am. And uh, have certification in preschool and children's ministries from Campbell University and the Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. So, um, as, as you're going through this system, do you kind of figure out what works with children and what doesn't? Yes. You can find out quickly what Five they minutes. like and what they don't <laughs> like. And you also can find out how quickly their attention span is as well. So, how long you have to actually get the message to them. Now, this book just kind of knocked me off my chair when uh, I, I got it. What's next for the people on earth? And this is a study of the book of Revelation for children. There, I don't think there's ever been anything like this. I haven't seen one uh, in the past. And, and well, God who would want to tackle it? Well, I didn't in the beginning either. Uh, I, I, in fact, would tell God over and over, I don't think I'm qualified to do that. And for about three months, we had this conversation. And then it was one day I woke up and I'm like, well, of course, I cannot do that, but he can and so with knowing that he was going to be the one to write the book, mm -hmm. I agreed and sat down and it was quite exciting actually to sit down and actually write it. I mean, I would get excited when it was time to go and write. Well, it's quite new. Has it been tried out yet? On It's only been out about six months. Yeah. And um, so we're still in the early stages of mm -hmm. promoting, but mm -hmm. done some radio interviews and um, done some newspaper articles. And you like believe that. that the Lord laid it on your heart for the book of Revelation that had been me, I'd say, well, let's go for another book. Well, <laughs> How about John or Luke? <laughs> the older children, specifically sixth graders, they really asked over and over and over. They really wanted to study it. They thought it was interesting. Um, and it is interesting. I agree. Mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated with Revelation, but, but very, like, scared of the subject, like afraid I couldn't do what I needed to do with it. So mm -hmm. um, it was fun to sit down and write it in a language that, you know, sixth grade, fifth grade, and up can understand, but not change the message. That was so critical not to change the message. Well, I commend you. Uh, never come across anything quite like this. Uh, I've taught Bible for years, but I never did tackle Revelation. So I'd leave that to those prophecy people yes. over there, you know. <laughs> so um, where, where did you start? You just start 
John is on this island here and he's talking to Jesus? Or? Right. Well, the first part of the book is the book of Revelation itself, just written in, written in language that fifth grade and up can understand it. And I started with my Bible laid out and if I, I, I had two or three different uh, translations of Bibles to use. And then I also had some commentaries. Um, I also, my go-to person was my husband, Doug, who's in seminary. And so he is very knowledgeable and I totally respect him. And I wanted to make sure, with, so if, at one point, if I thought I might be not exactly on target, he could help me out to get me right back in that. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a combination of using, you know, several different commentaries in the Bible um, and asking my gotten any kind of feedback so far? Uh, I've had good comments from parents, uh, even adults have read it, who have said that they have enjoyed it and learned themselves from it. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe how much I learned when I was doing it. It was quite eye-opening for me as well. So it was really a good experience for me, and I want to be able to translate that to other people as well. Well, you know, when I would uh, read the book of Revelation or hear it referred to, you know, I, I knew there was the churches in there and the seals and this and that and the other. But in the end, I knew Jesus wins, right. <laughs> so that's all I needed to know. But uh, you've taken them through some, some of the nuts and bolts of this book. Okay, uh, you started with the uh, letters to the seven churches. Yes, ma'am. And uh, how did you explain that to the children? Well, I, I start off by saying that the church is not an actual building. Mm -hmm. It's the people. And it is all of God's people who believe in him. So it's, it's people today. The church is his people today. And the seven churches are all going through different things in mm -hmm. the book of Revelation. And I believe churches today are going through the exact same things. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to, um, was able to talk about that in the book. Uh, also breaking that down further on my website. Um, so people could go to that if they're interested in getting a little deeper. Mm -hmm. But yes, churches back then are still the same as churches today. There were still the same things happening then as they are today, which totally makes the Bible relevant, applicable, and 100% still correct. Yes, and I think we'll get that website up there. We'll leave it up for the rest of the program. And um, a as you hear this, I think that even a lot of adults would probably like to have this book, and you can get it through the website. Is it Amazon and all those yes, places? Yes, ma'am. Amazon, okay. Barnes & Noble can definitely find it there as okay, well. Okay, so uh, you can uh, pay attention to that. I, I know I remember referring in a message to the church at Thyatira, and when you read the first two or three verses, you think, wow, I'd like to belong to that church. That's a great church. And then Jesus said, but this I have against you. So <laughs> you're right. Uh, same churches that exist today. That's exactly right. And, and that means we can learn from it still today. We can learn how to make the corrections as Jesus was correcting them, it can apply to us today, which I think is really good. Yeah, and that, that brings it home. It does. I never thought of it like that. Okay, these are just exactly the same things that are going on today. Um, and then you have a, a place in the book at the end of the chapter, it said, now what did we learn from this segment? The name of the book is, What's Next for the People of Earth? And um, like uh, we said, it deals specifically with the book of Revelation. So um, the, the segment, what did they learn? Yes. I would think there would be uh, somewhat of a variety of opinions of what they learned. Right. They can't, they, people, God, that's one beautiful thing about God is he gives us all choices and the ability to think and the ability to um, read something and learn from it. And you could read the, the exact same thing that I did, but we both could come away with maybe two different thought processes. So. Um, they can read it and learn from it. What I put in the what you can learn from this section is just things I definitely believe that God told me that we can definitely learn this from this chapter, from this section. So that's why I put that in there. Plus, when people hear it again, rep repetition tends to help people mm -hmm. remember better. It's not like uh, kind of one size fits all. Right. Okay, you deal with the seven seals, trumpets, and bowls. Um, Review a little bit of that, for, especially for the, uh, the seven seals. And how does a child get a hold or wrap their mind around what that means? Right. Well, the seven seals, and you've mentioned the trumpets and the bowls, those are all judgments that God brings upon the earth. And Jesus is the one who is the only one worthy to open up the seven seals. And the seals are first. So Jesus opens those one at a time. And each seal brings about a particular judgment. Um, like, for instance, the first one is the white horse comes out on his rider, which um, 
you know, you might think if the average person was reading, they might think that meant it was Jesus, but it's not. And I go into detail into that in the book, which is good because people can learn what each seal means and the consequence of each seal. And then when you get to the seventh seal, it means you're rolling into the seven bowls. And then you go through the seven bowls, which in turn roll on the seventh bowl rolls into, I mean, the trumpets and then the bowls. I had it backwards. <laughs> trumpets next, then bowls are last. The last judgments, the bowls, are the ones are, which are the most severe. And uh, who, are, is that where the churches are being judged? Right, the people left is, on earth, yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am, the people on earth at that particular time. I was just thinking, this would be great for a lot of adults. <laughs> it is. I've had a lot of adults, too. Yeah, if, uh, you know, if, if you're just really interested in the Bible and all, and uh, you would like... Uh, just a little simpler version to understand the book of Revelation. This is your book. Okay, um, tell us the story of the two witnesses. The those, are the, those are the ones that are going to lay dead, right? And the whole world will see it. Yes. I can go back because I'm old. <laughs> and how, how that was kind of held up to ridicule mm -hmm. until they put a satellite right. in the sky. And that's my time. And that's downright thrilling. It really Pick. was to me yes. to know that um, God's word is true. And if he yes. said the whole world can see it, they will see it. He'll yes. make a way for them to see it. And of course, now with the rapidity of this yes. kind of uh, information getting out, you know, that a kid can take a selfie and send it That's you know, exactly around right. the world. Uh, but tell us about the two witnesses. Well, the two witnesses are two preachers, two teachers, I like to call them so that the children can understand. And they are given the ability to preach God's word, and they do it for three and a half years. They also have the power to um, stop the rain from falling, um, to do plagues anytime they choose. They can turn water into blood. And when people try to attack them, God has given them the ability to protect themselves. They will be able to breathe fire out of their mouth to protect themselves. And they will be there for three and a half years preaching and teaching. And then there will be a time of come and there will be a nice little battle. And they will be killed. For three and a half days, they will be laid uh, out in the street for all to see, as you just mentioned. Um, and everybody will be celebrating because they are dead and they think that they have won the battle. But after three and a half days, God will breathe life into them again and he will take them up to heaven. And that will scare all the people on the earth at that time because they will be like, okay, I saw that they were dead. They were dead for three and a half days and now they are alive. So it's there, there are two key people uh, in the book of Revelation. And... You know, you think, well, okay, they put a satellite up there and we can we can do that. But nowadays, the kids are going to see them on their cell phones. Yes. It's going to be accessible. Yep. Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram. Ooh, chills. That's You think about exciting. all of the social medias out there, plus all the news, mm -hmm. the news stations who are can be anywhere and, and do a show. Um, they could be out in the middle of a field and, and still do a satellite, you know. <laughs> so it's very, very yep. interesting to know yep. that all will see. Uh, and you teach there's a holy trinity and an unholy trinity. Yes. We yes. know who the holy trinity yes. is. Yes, God the Father and the Holy Spirit. The, the unholy trinity is Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet, which are three key players also in the book of Revelation. All right. And um, what's the meaning of the woman and the scarlet beast? Well, the meaning of the woman in Scarlet Beast, the, the Scarlet Beast is Satan, and the woman is basically, uh, t she's getting ready to give birth, the Bible says, and to Jesus, which means, uh, and Jesus is born in uh, Jerusalem. And you all know when he was born as a baby, mm -hmm. Herod was very threatened by Jesus, and so he wanted him to be killed. And so he was decreeing that all the babies would be killed and how he would escape and how God does protect him. And that is kind of uh, a mention to that in Revelation. Mm -hmm. Because right, we're, we're taking this pretty fast. All right, the uh, celebration, the announcement of the marriage at Supper of the Lamb, that, that's when we start to really get kind of excited, Yes. Right? Oh, it's very exciting to talk about when Jesus returns and when he reigns and then when the new heaven and the new earth come to pass to be. It, it, it is going to be glorious, absolutely wonderful place for everyone. You think about it, no more pain, no more sorrow, nobody's sad anymore. It's all happiness. You know, it, all the, the sins are gone. It's a pure place. Do you, <clears throat> do you get the feeling that for America, mm -hmm. see, I believe that people maybe in Rwanda and places like that, Christians 
think they're in the Great Tribulation now. I mean, we look at all this through American eyes, you know. And so right. I go to bed on a good mattress every night, and my house has air conditioning. Right. <clears throat> there's nothing tribulation about that. That is correct. But I believe that for America, it's going to get a lot worse. I agree. I totally agree. I believe it is going to get worse. It's not going to get better. And if there was ever a time that moms and grandmothers need to be praying constantly for yes. their own children, for their own grandchildren. That is you true. know, Phyllis, I tell the audience on a regular basis, if you would pray for my children, that's fine. I welcome it. But it's my job. Yes. I can't, I can't expect them to call the names of my children before right. the Lord. That's my job, yes. and I have to do it. And I know that I had praying parents, and I had praying grandparents, and I have no doubt. There's power in prayer. There was power. It was yes. powerful, yeah. And as, as we look ahead, and I see the iniquity of the United States of America, you know, I try to get a little hope here and there, because we're supposed to be hopeful. That is correct. And encouraged. But when I have eight great-grandchildren that are going to be raised in Sodom and Gomorrah, it's very, it's very, very thought-provoking. Yes. And that's one reason this book is important. Yes. Uh, and it is a tool to reach people for Jesus. That was the whole purpose behind the book is how can we reach more people for you, Lord? And given today, as you said, the time is very bad. Mm -hmm. I think our only hope is in Jesus. He is the only way. And as you said a while ago, he is the winner. He is he the only the way end. to win. I like to win. I like to be on the winning teams. <laughs> when you read the last page of the book. Yes. Uh, if you just tuned in the last few minutes, I'm talking to Phyllis Gordon, who's written, I think, a revolution, revolutionary book here on what's next for the people of Earth. And this is the book of Revelation written in a form for children, uh, for children to understand because as things heat up and it's such it's such a horrible situation that we've had so many school shootings yes that are we going to just well there's another one is it going to be like that it will be forgotten next week and it's time my friends to really take seriously the things of God in your own family and all and pray for his safety and his protection but also to know what's going to happen um bible said i wouldn't have you to be ignorant That's and right. uh there's no reason for the people of god to be ignorant so i hope you'll take advantage of this uh, i think this is written for children but everybody could get something out of it and i'm sorry we're out of time but join me next time friends remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper god bless you if you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.